maybe we should just embrace the sound, right? <laughs> Let's go for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I think there's going to be a bit of so I, I, I'd rather wind noise than uh, others. So let's let's just see how it goes. Um, okay, so uh, I think most of you know me maybe from this morning, but uh, if not, uh, my name is Karen Power, um, and I'm a composer, a sound artist. Uh, let's just label me a creator uh, of some kind. Um, and I'm based in Ireland, um, that is home. Um, and so my, my, my practice is, is very diverse, um, as is, uh, I think, all most artists today, we find ourselves um, pulling in pockets. Um, and so just to sort of, I suppose, mention that uh, I'm a classically trained composer. That's my background. That's what I've spent years uh, training to be. Um, and also a, 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 an artist who suffers from stage fright. Um, so uh, I ruled out very, very quickly that playing the piano to be involved as a musician was not an option for me. So I thought, okay, how else am I going to contribute to the sound? I, I, I need to be in the music world. I need, I need this. So I turned to composition, um, and then uh, I became quite disillusioned with how that process uh, was was working. Um, just uh, I was still isolated, right? So I was still in my room making the pieces, um, uh, uh, hearing them in my head, of course, and uh, you know, and then sort of transferring this piece of paper to musicians, um, and then uh, maybe having like one or two hours with the musicians, um, and rehearsals seemed to mostly consist of. Well, if you wanted me to play that, why isn't it on the score? Um, and so I, I, I discovered quite early on that I needed to find a different way of being in this world if I was going to survive it. Um, and so uh, I had always been a, um, a keen listener and, and just sort of, I suppose, an on... Uh, like, I listened to a little bit of everything, right? And in college, I studied a little bit of everything. Um, and I... Uh, was not so keen on the idea of this is pop music, this is rock music, um, but more uh, as the years went along, I sort of developed an interest in uh, it's not the music that's different, it's the way we listen to it um, and how we set up that listening situation um, and maybe uh, to think a little bit more about uh, the situation that we put ourselves in to listen to a certain kind of music um, and our expectations of that kind of music. Um, and as this was developing, I was beginning to um, listen more and more to the world um, and become more uh, influenced um, by the world. Um, and of course, then the next step was, okay, I've been influenced by the globe, so how no do I now share this um, with uh, other people and how do I get them interested in the globe um, and so I started to um, uh, spend time seeking out places where um, the human was not dominant and um, so uh, we were not the the top dog so I'm just going to give you an example of the Amazon rainforest okay we, we all know we're already in the Amazon rainforest um, but what I mean is uh, uh, I was uh, there and I was at a, I was at a scientific station, um, um, but essentially when you're out and you're field recording and you're on your own, um, the chances are that an animal will have seen you long before you've seen them. Um, and if it decides that it's hungry in your lunch, then, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. And even this, like this heightens your, your, your listening. Right, because suddenly your survival depends on your listening, and this I find very interesting. Also, is that sort of that subtle change, um, and this these kinds of observations really began to inform the way I was making music, um, and and who I was sharing that music with. Um, so uh, as this went along, the the nature of the music changed. Um, I began seeking out more and more isolated and dangerous places. Um, uh, to try to hear 
what what is unique about these ecosystems and how fragile they are and and how even me being present in the space is changing the ecosystem and how can i maybe still be present but not not have such a such a an effect and how can i um how can i bring this into uh musical works and who whose minds do i need to change about this um and so uh, this is one of the reasons why a lot of my works, I work with musicians still. So they're like, I, I create installations, but mostly I still work with performing uh, musicians. Um, and uh, I've spent the last seven years working on devising a kind of a new system of score um, so that um, uh, the musicians can uh, use their ears first and foremost. Um, and then with the help of graphic scores and text scores and some notation um, that we can kind of keep the act of listening alive um, in the performance space and keep communication alive. Um, and in the beginning, I worked with, you know, only musicians who are willing to take that plunge with me. Um, but now as I've kind of developed more confidence around it, um, I'm trying now to work with more established uh, uh, ensembles and musicians um, and so for example in 2023 uh, I will prepare a piece for uh, Antarctica um, and the RTE Concert Orchestra um, and this is important because it's like it's it's a little bit like um, what uh, you were saying what everybody is saying um, you know we need to widen the communities that we're maybe uh, working with and talking to and not just talk to ourselves all the time, and so for me, this is uh, this is these kinds of pieces. Part of their aim is to encourage a new kind of process, a new way of uh, uh, defining what uh, art and music can be, something that connects, um, and and just sort of try to sort of pry open those without alienating anyone, and I mean the orchestra too. Because you know, they, like th these traditions, uh, traditions are traditions for a reason, um, and uh, it's never my interest to go in and, and destroy anything, but just try to sort of eke out uh, something, something else uh, through uh, active listening and uh, sort of, in some cases, co-creation, um, and and uh, obviously this links with uh, inclusive uh, practice and things like this. So. Without further ado, I'm just going to um, maybe play you a few field recordings and then I'll um, uh, maybe just the first few are going to just, uh, the first one is definitely just raw and then maybe we'll basically, uh, the last one is uh, a live recording of uh, a big uh, piece from last December to sort of show how the musicians become part of the field recording environment, so not the other way around. So, right, I'm not bringing the field recording into the music space in some of these pieces, but more creating a sort of uh, an inclusive environment where both need to kind of negotiate the space a little bit. Um, so this first field recording, I just thought it's been a really long day for everybody, and I thought, you know, let's just give people some nice Antarctica ice. Um, so, this is um, um, a field recording made uh, underneath um, the um, Antarctica uh, ice. I was there in uh, just February gone. Um, and uh, it's very close to uh, a series uh, of icebergs. Um, uh, I apologize because I, I misunderstood the information and so I actually prepared the, the, the recordings are made in quad. Um, but uh, we have stereo, so just um, do bear that in mind. Uh, I've tried to mix it, but um, anyway, here's some um, Antarctica ice. Feel free to close your eyes, because I know we're all tired, um, and uh, just, just because it's beautiful. I can say that because it's not mine. So, yeah, here we go.
sorry, it has to be so short. Um, uh, but I mean, isn't that just incredible, right? So for all the musicians in the room, you've got pitch, you've got harmony, you've got texture, you've got you've got absolutely everything um, that one would need to uh, uh, appreciate a sound, and it's right there underneath, um, uh, playing to itself. Uh, and of course, the lucky creatures that get to get to live in it. Um, so uh, it's these kinds of things. So a lot of the field recordings that I do, um, they might be at the surface, uh, but they'll also try to tap into a world that uh, we can't hear for some reason or other, another. Either it's uh, underground, uh, or maybe it exists in a frequency that's above uh, where or below where we get to hear. And so. Um, I've spent uh, a lot of time just sort of uh, gathering um, portable kit um, so that um, I can try and um, unearth uh, some of these recordings. Um, and then obviously a huge part of my practice, um, uh, I, think we, I think we ended up calling this talk uh, Field Recording as Composition. Um, so I think like for me, it really is, you know, those decisions about why I'm there, what it is I'm looking to record, and then after a very long time, hopefully, then you know, making that setup and really trying to sort of uh, find those kinds of sounds um, that, I'm, that I'm looking for or unearth something unique within that environment. Um, so the next, um, I'm trying not to talk so much because, um, so the next uh, little snippet I'm just going to play you. So this is a little bit louder. So I'm just I'm going to just try and um, this is also underwater, um, but um, uh, and this material was used um, in a piece with uh, Lux and M um, here in in Berlin, um, and uh, the piece is called Bog Songs. Um, so you can guess where the recordings have come from. Um, but what's really fascinating here is that these, um, so this is made in an Irish uh, bog um, uh, in a pool of water that's approximately like this size, okay? And, and maybe like this deep. Um, and it's muddy, it's dirty, it's everything. And the only reason that, this, that these creatures are surviving in there is because of you know, glacial waters that have moved through that land and have been moving through that land. Um, and that idea of connectivity, right? So that idea, I think somebody mentioned earlier today, um, impacts that we, you know, that we don't know we have on the planet, right? So, and, and things that, that kind of, um, land long after we've we've made the impact, and I, I think that's really interesting because you hear, you see and hear that in nature all the time. Um, so things that only exist for a long time that's already gone. Um, okay, so here we go. So these are some uh, creatures. I will say this is they're both pure field recordings, um, but one is also from a sea cave um, that started speaking to me in Beira. Uh, with all its um, uh, echoes and uh, so they're layered uh, together but they are both uh, raw field recordings. I hope this isn't too loud. I'm sorry if it is. Oh, no it's not.
So obviously you can hear patterns, cycles, these are all individual creatures um, coexisting in this tiny, tiny little space. Um, and um, yeah, I can uh, tell any of you if you want to know more about that Lux and M piece, I can tell you privately. Um, for now, I'm just going to move on um, to um, actually a field recording that um, I haven't really listened to yet. Um, but uh, I heard a small part of it and I just thought it was kind of perfect um, for today. Um, but it's, it, um, so it's very new. Um, and it's from uh, northern Argentina. And I want you to just um, uh, listen to this because the, the piece that uh, comes after, although it's a very different piece, it, uh, this field recording and what it contains really does um, uh, uh, emulate my, my wish for how instruments and environment can, uh, can move into each other's worlds and can coexist and can uh, change uh, their direction. Um, uh, and uh, so I thought it would be good to hear them kind of one after the other. So what you're going to hear first is um, just a plain unedited field recording in northern Argentina um, in uh, a very lush uh, rainforest um, in, in Argentina. Um, and um, uh, these crazy birds just started up um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite extraordinary. So here we go. stop that because that went on for 40 minutes um, and uh, any of you Space Invaders fans from back in the day right with the little doesn't it sound just like one of those little um, yeah really incredible um, so I'm just gonna play you um, a tiny extract from um, a, a recent piece um, again here in Berlin um, with uh, the inc incredible uh, Ensemble Mosaic um, which we um, premiered just before Christmas um, the piece is called Adrift, uh, Yet Somehow Tethered, um, and it's all about uh, locating oneself um, or dislocating oneself. Um, and it was a three-roomed piece that you walked through with um, video projections and, and light and, uh, and the musicians. Um, and the musicians, um, like a lot of my pieces at this stage, are following a graphic uh, score with some uh, pitches, and then they're following private, uh, what I call aural parts, um, which have been extracted from the main uh, aural score. Uh, the whole thing is field recording based, although it is composed field recording or recomposed. So um, they have been um, uh, extracted. Um, so I know it's weird to play you audio only without seeing the video, but it's just to show the example of how I hear the how I hear the potential for 
music to become part of that environment. And as I said, not always thinking about it the other way around. So here we go. We'll just play a few minutes of this. Oh, sorry. That's, that's the same recording again. Brain. OK, here we go. Okay, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you very much. <laughs>